All that uh, hard work has now been rewarded at last. Ray Stubbs reporting. 55 years have elapsed since Donington last vibrated to the sound of Grand Prix racing cars. One of the most spectacular things I've ever seen in my life, to sit here and watch these cars swaying from side to side, beautifully under control as they come down to this corner. And you will only run, Richard, with only one lap to go in this very grueling... The most exciting moment ever in my life was the first lap of the 1937 Grand Prix with the 16th... It, it was one of the golden ages of motor racing and I'm very lucky and privileged to have lived through it and to have seen it here. Yes, here he comes, here he comes. Here's the winner flashing down the back of Scotty at about 160 miles an hour, 165. The 30s was a very different era, but some things never change. The popularity of motor racing meant the queues were as long then as they are today. And the memories of those halcyon days are extra special to those who were drawn here like a magnet. One of the outstanding memories is just getting here because there weren't any motorways in those days. And I remember we left North London, where I lived at the time, got in the car, drove up the, A up the A5, and there was an absolutely unprecedented crowd the first year the auto unions and Mercedes were here, something like 100,000 people, which was incredible for a motor racing meeting in those days. And then you arrived here, there was this fantastic atmosphere. Everything along here, behind me, was, was solid trees in those days. They've all been taken down, partly for, to help the airport, which is behind me, and partly to help the viewing. So it was a very, di very different atmosphere at the course. It, it was a lot narrower. The bridge down there, they actually went underneath the bridge. And when they got to Coppice, they went between the farmhouse and the farm buildings through the farmyard. And there was a no passing rule there. So if you can imagine a Mercedes-Benz coming towards you through the farmyard, absolutely flat out, it was an absolutely magical experience. Donington was Britain's first real road racing circuit. Laid out on the public roads of the East Midlands, it was an immediate success with the racegoers. No helmets in those days, and no seatbelts either. Although that was no bad thing when a quick exit stage left was required. It was in 1935 that Donington hosted its first Grand Prix. The cars on the grid roared away to start a race of over 300 miles. And the chequered flag would eventually be seen first by Britain's Dick Shuttleworth. The average speed, 69 miles per hour. As Senna goes at that pace, he thinks he's stalled. But by 1937, the British had to take a back seat thanks to the expanding technology of Germany. Mercedes-Benz, the Silver Arrows, were ruling the roost and alongside them, another German team, Auto Union. The difference in the cars was plain to see. The race took three hours to complete, but with the German cars four times as powerful than the rest and capable of speeds of 170 miles per hour, the outcome was obvious. The checkered flag's all ready. Oh, this is grand. The sun's shining. Donington has never, I think, had a better day here. Now, here he, he's just coming up now over the right. Bruce Meyer gets the checkered flag, winner of the Donington Grand Prix. In those days, it was Tazio Nuvolari who was the most exciting driver of the times. His distinctive red cap was his trademark. The Italian was on the grid when the Duke of Kent signalled the start of the 1938 Donington Grand Prix. But it was the Second World War that was just around the next corner, and that 1938 race was Donington's last Grand Prix, till today, of course. At 46, Nuvolari drove to victory. And in the history of the sport, he has left an indelible mark on fans and contemporaries alike. Tazio Nuvolari uh, was a teammate. We raced together. And to me, in my era, was the greatest driver there ever was. Uh, we used to go in some places on circuit during practice to try to find out why he was going so fast. And uh, we could see that he had probably, certainly, faster reflex than we had. He was taking chances, but we were taking chances too. But I think he had faster, much faster reflex than we had. He was a great driver. The great drivers of 1993 are here today, and Donington is ready to resume its love affair with Grand Prix racing. The ghosts of the 30s have certainly made their presence felt, and they live on in the parts of the old track that still remain. 
Starkey's Bridge sits proudly alongside, part of the circuit they'll race on today. In the 30s, the cars took off at the Melbourne Rise. That hasn't disappeared either, but it's not part of today's track. It serves as a service road. Today is an important day in the history of British motorsport. Then, excited schoolboys of the 30s have returned to toast Donington's return to Grand Prix racing. And it's all been brought about by Donington's owner, multi-millionaire Tom Wheatcroft. A lifelong fan, it's Wheatcroft who's driven a 15-year campaign to bring the world's top cars back here. And at 70, he was on his track himself last week in a Mercedes that contested the 1938 race. Donington started as a novice. I thought, well, any other circuit can make it pay, I can. So, I bought it. I applied many years ago for two Grand Prix in England. It's been such a long wait and such an hard fight to get it. Everything's been uphill battle and being the only private, en private owned race Grand Prix circuit, race circuit for Formula One Grand Prix, I'm quite proud. Donington is Tom Wheatcroft and Tom Wheatcroft is Donington. Because he's such an outgoing, friendly, generous man, and everything here is him, everything takes its time from him. And as you rightly say, it's a very pleasant, relaxed, almost pre-war atmosphere, but with a great deal of organization and administration as well. That means an inflation rate that's taken the Donington staff from 11 to 700 plus for today. 18,000 tonnes of gravel have been taken on for safety measures. Communications have been installed for a TV audience estimated in the region of 500 million. In terms of tradition, Donington has no problems. What it's eager to demonstrate is that it deserves a regular place on the Formula One calendar. We've got to put on a show that isn't just perfect, it's got to be even better than that. We've got a one-off shot to keep Grand, Grand Prix racing here. We think we can do it. We've shown it with motorcycles. We've turned an ailing event into a world beater. We want the Grand Prix to stay here in some form or other, and we'll be making sure on Sunday there's no second bites back. It's got to be good, it's got to be the best, and it will be. Wonderful pictures, wonderful nostalgia which you've entered into in the last few days because we've got some lovely pictures of you in what is Murray, uh, a Maserati, 1957 Maserati 250F, yes? It is. Tom Wheatcroft said, would you like to come up here and drive something, Murray? And I said, my goodness, I would, Tom. What would you like to drive? I said, I would like to drive my dream car, the 1957 Maserati. That's the car that uh, the great Juan Manuel Fangio won the world championship in. And I tell you, Bob, I thought I was really flying. What sort of speeds were you doing? Oh, I don't know, about 90 miles an hour maximum, but I mean, it's absolutely paralytic compared with what they're doing today, or will be doing today, even, even in the wet conditions. Difficult to handle, Murray? No, I can honest, I'm not a great driver, and I can honestly say that that car is the most forgiving and tolerant motor car I've ever driven. It, it seemed to invite you to go farther, faster, uh, and, and when you did, if you made a mistake, it seemed to shrug its shoulders and, and put it right for you. It was one of the high points of my life, honestly. Speeds were a bit different today, weren't they? Well, yes, they will be very different today because uh, even in the appalling conditions that we've got at the moment, and Bob, I honestly think it's getting a bit brighter now, uh, people have said there's a, a drier front coming along, and I hope they're right, although Senna won't hope so. But do you think the safety car could be out, Murray? Well, the safety car went out in Brazil. It's an innovation in Grand Prix. Yeah, and you could explain what it yeah, means. Uh, well, the, the safety car goes out if there is debris or a stalled car on the track, as, as there was in Brazil. The, the, the competitors line up behind it with the leader first behind it. It goes around until the debris has been cleared. Then it goes in and they don't stop the clocks or the race, it's still on, but everybody closes up. You see, and in Brazil, Senna was able to close up to Damon Hill and eventually pass him and win. And I would confidently predict that the safety car will be out today for the second time in history. Let's have a look at the grid and uh, your comments on that. Uh, nice to see Damon well, on the front row there. Yes, and uh, with his teammate Alain Prost. And there's